people watching will be thinking, I think, that they were getting together and she was potentially talking about going off to the islands and the kinds of girls that would be procured for him. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the way I the way I look at Prince Andrew is this: from what that's why I've, sp I've spoken out in previous interviews. From what I have physically seen, in terms of the way we had to break rules to allow unidentified women into the palace, that's highly unusual. Mm. It's unprecedented. It's a massive security breach. And I'm, uh, although a senior officer did say publicly, one of my one of my old off senior officers, the royal family can have who they want in the palace. That's right, they can. But there's a fine line between having who you want in the palace and having identified individuals being let into the palace. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you a prime example. Um, so obviously, I said to you, you get people come up and say they're here to see the Queen and whatever, but they're not. So you, if, imagine yeah. if we just let them in. Imagine, oh, okay, yeah, we'll let you in. Well, he expect there was a woman that you've spoken about. Yeah. Go on, tell yeah. that story. So, so on this particular occasion. Um, uh, a young lady turns up at the, um, and I will say, uh, and I've said it before, I'll say it again, the women that I saw, which were a lot, yeah, were all in their early 20s to early 30s. Mm -hmm. Not much older and definitely not younger. Mm. You know, some people have questioned me about, oh, well, you don't know, they could have been younger, but you wouldn't, you, well, they, to me, they looked in their 20s. Okay. There was no one there that I would would say, does your mum know where you are? Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So uh, this lady comes up, well dressed, and they're all well groomed. All these individuals are well, very, very smart, well to do individuals. Attractive women. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was he um, married to Fergie at the time? No, no. Okay. Um, he was divorced to her. Um, but this individual came, and Andrew had just come in about half hour before, flown in in his jag. There's myself and two other officers, and one of the officers is quite a tubby boy. Mm. Um, which he must have clocked as he drove in. Andrew must have clocked him. And um, so the, the, the lady says, usually the form was we would ring up Andrew's footman after hours because most of these individuals turn up after working hours because the palace is a working palace nine to five. Yeah. And then obviously there'd be private engagements for the Queen after that, like maybe her cousin or friends or whatever would turn up, same with Philip um, and Andrew, but all his were women. Hmm. And they could be coming in up until 11 o'clock at night. Um, and so he stuck out like a sore thumb purely because the amount of women that were coming in that we were having to facilitate. Yeah. But obviously the fact that he was very cagey about who they, who they were, we wouldn't get the names. We would just be told to contact the footman after hours. And because um, obviously we'd have any, any, any anybody who came apart from Maxwell, we'd have the names up till five o'clock. After five o'clock, no names. Mm. Contact the footman, his footman, and let, let him know Prince Andrew's guest is here. He will come down and escort them into the the palace. Mm. It made your job difficult though, because you could yeah. be anyone, right? I'm going to come. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm oh, going to validate. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm going to validate exactly my concerns in a minute. So, so this particular lady says, oh, oh, we said, okay, we tried to ring the footman, but he wasn't answering the phone. So now we're in a position. We've got a guest there, but we can't confirm because the footman's not answering the phone. What do we do? So she said. Um, so we said, really? So I'm going to have to hold you a minute while we try and, you know, get hold of the footman. She goes, I'll tell you what, I'll ring, I'll ring Andrew on my mobile. Hmm. So she rings him on her mobile and we could hear it. Um, and he said, put the officer on the phone. So my colleagues took the phone. And he's got, listen to me, you fat lardy ass. Let my guest in now. I'm going to come down there. Now, we knew that he would come down there. Um, and so we let her in straight away. We let her in because had we not, We'd have probably been looking, pounding the beat in Brixton the next day, all of us holding each other's hands. Cause Did he have that power? He had that power. He, 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 he'd rung up before when another incident, um, the North Centre Gate, remember I told you about that, that's mm. that's a, a gate that leads into the quad where mm. his private uh, door is. That, when it gets dark for security reasons, it needs to be shut and locked, all right? Um, on one occasion, he's told the officers, he always, he's rung up the control and said, leave the gate open because one of my guests will be leaving via that way. Usually they'd go through the side door, down in, in, in a different way. Anyway, the message wasn't passed on to the other officers, so they've gone and shut the gate. So this this lady has come down and obviously locked in. She can't she can't get out the gates a lot, so she's gone back and told him he's came out, shouting through the gates, open these fights, you think the embassy... Oh, honestly, he went mad, and then, and then he went, done no more, he went back inside and rung up the commander of the Royal Protection Command at home and shouted and screamed at him. Wow. So, you know, like... He reports to no, you know, he looks no, up to no one. He'll, he'll, yeah, he'll ring the commander. If he's if he's got a problem, 
and then obviously we're 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 looking bad you know what i mean because mm. as i said to you before um there are officers that are are um are loyal subjects if you were sure. as opposed to street coppers yeah you know that, that are that would do go above and beyond the call of duty for the royal family because mm. at the end of the day who did we swear allegiance to when we joined the place yeah the queen the queen or the king there so were, were they sort of sort of suck ups a bit were they, yeah was there i mean of again mix? you've got the again when i come back to the masonic influence because what you'd have is um so the, the 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 royal protection command the masonic influence or the masonic the masons within that were very closely linked to the royal household masonic lodge mm. And what would happen is you'd have officers that are there 20, 30 years on that role command, or role protection command. They would retire one day and then suddenly be employed by the royal household the next day. Mm. They would go from, you see what I mean? And yeah. they're, then gone, so they, they've just sidestepped into the royal household. Um, and one famous person who did that, and this was at the time when Prince Andrew was playing up and the Epstein thing was going on, was Lord Loughborough, who, who was a titled lord, who was the commander of the royal protection command at the time. Um, and I'm not going to knock him because he was he was a good commander. He was a good a good you know he was a sound individual, but you know there was stuff that happened while on his watch with like Andrew visiting Epstein and stuff like that. I mean, we'll go into that. But um, but but he when he retired, he became master of the household for the king at St James's Palace. Hmm. Wow. So one minute he's a commander of protection, next minute he's the master of the household. There's a lot of politics going on. There's a inside. lot of politics, but again, it comes down to loyalty as well you know what i mean so yeah. uh, you know with with andrew visiting epstein and if you look at it in the most basic terms sort of uh, for people who sort of don't know too much about security and procedures mm. if we to keep it like this right as a mem senior member of the royal family prince andrew therefore um places where he's going to stay for a period of time have to be vetted um so we've got a foreign travel office within the royal protection command that deal and, and domestic foreign and domestic travel office they're officers that will liaise with local police forces in this country or abroad um and let them know roles are coming mm. they need to know where the local hospital is lo local police station in case there's an emergency and they need to be moved so it's all planned yeah um and obviously the premises that they're staying would need to be checked a lot of the times you'll have an advance party uh, when senior members are going out so you'll have officers fly out to the location or or if this in this country wherever and check out the premises before the 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 people arrive the royal members of the royal yeah. family arrive same within in the, in the states so they would have checked out the premises that prince andrew was going to stay at and who owned them epstein so the local authority must have done the checks and said listen the flag is coming but it's flagged up as a convicted felon Who's, who owns that premises you do know that and obviously Andrew's gone against the advice that we would have got from the command and said listen I'm going 